Hello Calc Kids! Welcome back to another lesson in Calculus. This is Mr. Bean, and in today's lesson we're going to learn about motion involving parametric and uh, vector valued functions. So pretty much the same type thing we've already been doing, we're just going to now take these vectors and specifically make sure we understand how it relates with motion. So position, velocity, acceleration, and then speed which means there's not a lot that is new. We have been focusing on this stuff, position, velocity, and acceleration, way back from when we first learned about derivatives and how they interrelate. So when you have your position function, you take its first derivative, you would get a velocity function. So whether it's a parametric or it's a vector valued function, it's the same thing. And then the derivative of velocity gets you down here to acceleration. So the second derivative of acceleration. Now, when you get speed, speed is not a vector. Okay, these first three up here, these are vectors. Speed is not a vector. Speed means you're taking the magnitude of velocity, or in other words, magnitude of the first derivative of position. That is this. You take the square root of, and then you have x prime squared. So be careful here, it's not x squared and y squared, it's x prime. So the x component of your vector and square it, your y component of the vector and square it. Or if it was if you were doing with parametrics, it's the same idea. Parametric, the x component, par, the y component of the parametric, the derivatives, square it. And then you take the square root of the whole thing. Okay, so let's put this into practice. For this first problem, we're going to find the velocity vector, and then the speed, and then the acceleration vector. Notice again, speed is not a vector. So we're the velocity and acceleration, those are vectors though. So uh, we've got a particle that's moving the xy plane described by this thing. So its first derivative, I'm going to just kind of do this kind of small here. The derivative of this is going to be 5 cosine of t over 5. But then don't forget, you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of t over 5 is just 1 fifth. This is like 1 fifth times t. So that's the derivative. And then uh, let's do the derivative of this one. So the derivative of that piece is going to be negative 5 sine of t over 5, and then again you multiply by the derivative of the inside. So then that leads us to the velocity vector, which is going to be, this can simplify, the 1 fifth and the 5 cancel, so you have cosine t over 5, and then the y component is this one simplified, so it's negative sine of t over 5. And there's our vector. So there's our velocity vector, now let's find the acceleration vector. I'll do speed last, let's find the acceleration next. So next, our acceleration, so a of t, is going to equal, and I think I can just go straight to the answer without losing you here. The derivative of this is negative sine, so it's negative and then sine, but we're also going to have the derivative of the inside, so negative one-fifth sine of t over 5, and then, that's a t right there, and then the derivative of this one is going to be cosine, but I still have the negative, so negative cosine, oh, one-fifth, forgot the one-fifth, let me erase that because after I get done, I'm multiplying by the derivative of the inside, so I'll have a one-fifth, and then cosine of t over five. Boom, okay, so there is my velocity vector, my acceleration, acceleration vector. Now let's do speed. So speed is the square root of the derivative of this squared. So that derivative is right here, it's this velocity one, right? So it's that squared, so I have cosine squared of t over 5 plus, and then that component squared. So, uh, well, that's just negative sine squared is going to be positive. So sine squared of t over 5. Again, you don't square the t over 5 part. That's inside the sine. So that's what this squared part is here. And then you have to remember this. If I have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, if I have the sine squared and the cosine squared, and they're being added together, that equals 1. It's the Pythagorean identity. So that comes up again. So this is exactly what's going on here. This is just the same thing as the square root of 1. Therefore, the speed is 1. So we've got our velocity vector, our acceleration vector, and then our speed. Okay, good. Got them all. So now let's do a quick reminder on something that's just good to review for us, and that is reminding us when does something speed up. So we have a particle that speeds up or, uh, or slows down depending on velocity and acceleration. So when the velocity and acceleration have, when it's speeding up, it has the same sign. So when they have the same sign, speeding up, which then leads us to when is it slowing down? When they have different signs. So when, this, when it's both positive or both negative, speeds up, or if they are different, velocity and acceleration, then you know it's slowing down. 
Okay, so just get that written down as a reminder real quick before we start moving into some of this other stuff. So for number two, I probably should have said that this is the, the uh, position function. So I'm gonna say this is position right here. That's what we're talking about. R of T represents position. So we're just finding the velocity vector and the acceleration at time T. So pretty simple stuff here. We're just taking the first derivative. So that vector is now 6T squared plus one. And then the Y component is 2T. And then the acceleration vector will be the derivative of that. It's 12T comma, and then that one is just a two. And that's it. Yeah, there's our vector. Now for this one, let's find the speed. This is a different problem. We're not using this one up here. Let's find the speed at time t equals two if this is the position function, r of t. Again, our my practice will be more clear. This is position right here. That's r of t for this problem. So in order to do this, we need to know the velocity vector in order to figure out the speed. So the velocity is going to be, this is three, that is the derivative. And then this one is going to be, see if you can follow me here, negative 2t e raised to the negative t squared. So it's always this itself, e raised to the negative t squared, and then times it by the derivative of the inside. So here's the chain rule, negative 2t, and I just put it in front first. And then I uh, close my vector, and now we can take each component separately. So we take the square root of this squared, so that's... 3 squared, which is a 9, plus, and now we take this thing squared. Oh, it's at time t equals 2, right? So then I'll say negative 2 times, oh, that's confusing. So this whole thing is being squared. What's the best way to do this? Well, we're going to end up using a calculator here, so I guess it doesn't really matter too much. I'm going to plug in the 2 here and just say uh, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, e to the, and then this is a 2 up here, Negative two squared is four, but it's negative four. Don't get confused there. Some of you are gonna be like, oh wait, Mr. Bean, but you're squaring it. Shouldn't it be positive? No, that negative is outside what's being squared. It's outside the T. So it's negative four and then close your parentheses and then it's squared because it's, you have your X prime squared and your Y prime squared. So this is our Y prime and then we're squaring it. And then you can plug it into a calculator uh, and just work it from there. And I found that it's 3.000, like 89 or something like that. I'm just showing you that it's not exactly three. So I'm just showing you more decimals, uh, but that would be the speed. Technically, if we were doing it on a test, you'd only have to go three decimal places, one, two, three. So you might've said 3.001 if you wanted to, but I just showing you the rest of those decimals. Okay, so that's our speed. Um, and really that's kind of what we're doing here. Let's do a couple more things that'll be a little bit different for you. That is total distance traveled by a particle. So if you remember back before when we did integrals, we would say the integral from A to B of the absolute value of the velocity, right? That's what we would do. So it looks similar, right? But this is the magnitude of the velocity. And remember that is your speed. So what we're doing now is this, we're gonna take the integral from A to B of, and then you figure out the speed. So that's what you're, that's what you're doing. That's the, that's what this absolute value, it's not absolute value, it's like magnitude of V. So getting that written down, if you haven't finished writing it down yet, cause I'm gonna go on and do some practice with this. And the first one is we have a velocity vector here and we're gonna figure out uh, what is the position at time t equals three. So if we know velocity and we wanna know position, there's two ways of doing this. So let me show you first, this is how I usually do it if I wanna know the position at t equals three. So at, t equals three, the position is going to be, it used to be at one and I'm adding how much it's changed. So it's at one and from zero to three seconds, I just do the integral of the velocity, which is two t plus one with respect to t. So there's the x component. The y component would be, I used to be at two, so I'm starting off here at two and I'm adding the integral of velocity, which is just, oh, from zero to three. So from zero to three, and then of five dt. All right, and then that's good enough. That is the answer. Of course, you gotta work through it and you'd find the answer. Take the antiderivative, th plug in the three, minus, plug in the zero, same with this one, and you get where the position, the new position is at time t equals three. But there's another way of doing it which might be useful to you at different times, and that is, uh, let's figure out what the position is. So if we know this is velocity, then the position, let's just call it p of t, the position is going to equal, I'm gonna do my vector, 
the antiderivative of this. So that's 2t squared over 2. So t squared plus, that becomes a t, plus some constant. And then my next one is the antiderivative of 5 is just 5t plus some constant. So I'm going to distinguish these two constants uh, just as this one's a 1 and this one's a 2. It's not really necessary that you have to do that. I just, I'm doing it just so that I don't lose track of the different c's that I have going on here. So now what do I do next? Well, if I know that at time 0 the x is a 1, so that means this x has to equal 1 when the time is a 0 plus 0 plus c1. Therefore, c1, that first constant, has to be a 1. And then this one, the y value is a 2. See my y value 2? So that thing has to be 2 when time is a 0. So that's a 0. See so at t equals 0. So time is a 0 plus my other constant. So that means that the other constant is a 2. So now I can say that my position function is equal to this vector is going to be t squared plus t plus my constant, which is a 1. And then my y component of this vector is 5t plus 2. And now we can plug in the 3. So p of 3 is going to equal, work that out, 3 squared is 9, plus 3 is 12, plus 1 is 13, comma, and then plug in the 3 here, 5 times 3, 15, plus 2, 17. So there's my new position. My position at time 3 is going to be 13, 17. It used to be at 1, 2, now it's at 13, 17. And if you worked it with this problem here, that would give you 13, and this one would give you 17. Either way is fine to do. I just wanted you to make sure you remember how to do both ways, depending on how you want to do it. All right, so then the last thing is, find, what's the total distance traveled for this problem? The total distance traveled, we're going to use a calculator to help us. So on the interval 0 to 3, so let's set this up. We have interval from 0 to 3, and now we are doing, remember how this works? We're doing the speed, right? So when we have a vector, it's already, this vector is already velocity. So this here is x prime, and this is already y prime. So we're going to say this squared, so we're going to say 2t plus 1, quantity squared, plus, and then it's that one squared, 5 squared with respect to t. And then you can do this in a calculator. Okay, we'll do this with calculators, not trying to worry about doing this any other way. You can see there, I've already set it up, 0 to 3, 2x plus 1, quantity squared, plus... Oh wait, that's not right. I have a little extra x in there. All right, let's fix this. I'll do it on the fly. Second entry, come up inside here and delete this x. Enter. There we go. There's the right answer. So we'd get 19.649, or if you round it up, 0 0.650. I'll truncate it. 649, and I'll just cut it off right there. So that's the total distance traveled, whatever our units are, from 0 to 3. That's how far the particle has traveled. And now our last set of problems, this one's actually pretty quick and easy, and that is how do you know if it's moving up, down, right, left, that type of thing. So it'll have a, because it has both an x and a y component, it will be moving both with an x uh, right and left direction, and then with the y component tells you the left, excuse me, the y component tells you the up and down component and direction. So how do we know if the particle is moving to the right? It's moving to the right if its x derivative is greater than zero. So in this case, we want to say, when is 2e to the negative t over 4 greater than 0? Well, then we could solve it for this. Negative t to the fourth is greater than 0. And it's exponential. So no matter what we plug into this exponent up here, the exponential is always going to be positive. So in other words, it doesn't matter what we plug in. It's always moving to the right. So on this interval, it, the answer is basically always. So the interval t is greater than or equal to 0. That's when it's moving to the right. Now on this one, when is the particle moving up? That happens when the y component's derivative is positive. So in this case, t minus 4 over t plus 5. We want to say, when is that greater than 0? So this gets a little tricky because you could see if I did a t equals negative 10, if I did t equals negative 10, I'd get negative 14, negative 5. Well, that's positive. t equals negative 10 would make this positive. But we're only worrying about when t is greater than or equal to 0. So I can't plug in any negative numbers. I can only plug in positive numbers. So in that case, you can see here, it's only going to happen when this thing here is going to be positive. Like this will always be positive, right? If you plug in a zero or more, the bottom is always positive. So how do we make the top positive? Only if t minus 4 is greater than 0, or therefore when t is greater than 4. That's when it's moving up. If t is 
less than four, then it would be moving left if it's between zero and four. Okay, that is everything. So you'll have a couple other problems that might, maybe we didn't cover exactly like this lesson, but with your knowledge of position, velocity, acceleration, you should be able to figure out these problems without too much difficulty. So rock that master check and I will see you back in our next lesson.